protein, especially when compared to the other macronutrients, fats and carbohydrates, is very difficult to digest. From chewing to the stomach, small intestine and beyond, it requires a lot more work than pretty much any non-protein based food. That combined with the tendency to overeat, at least in America, can make increasing your dietary protein a bad thing. Normally when someone's eating a lot of chicken, drinking protein shakes, they're viewed as healthy. Oh yeah, high protein diet bro. But in reality, could be damaging their bodies in a different way. When a person gets fat eating junk food, stands an American diet, you can visibly see it. They're not healthy, they're fat, they're obese, their cellulite looks like cottage cheese. When a bodybuilder drinks enough protein to destroy his kidneys, you won't really know it until he's a headline in a muscle magazine, you know? Yeah, so protein requires a lot more enzymes than the other macronutrients and a pretty diverse gut microbiome if you do want to have specifics to help break it down. Americans overeat a lot of low quality protein and regardless of the protein quality, it's not getting digested any easier. So you want the best stuff that you can afford to put in your body. And although most people might not notice how organ damage looks, it will manifest itself on the outside as well. You know, your skin, your complexion, how pale you are, jaundice, things like that. So any food in excess is bad. It's just when you have those low quality junk foods with a high omega-6 intake that distorts your appetite, you know, processed foods, vegetable oils, feedlot conventional meats that have poor fatty acid ratios like pork and chicken, it's impossible for the standard American dieter to not overeat. And when we get more specific into health issues around digestion, having large amounts of undigested protein in the gut is very bad for liver function and dysbiosis, AKA gut bacterial imbalance. Once a person gets to the point of gut issues, way too much protein will show itself in different forms. A lot of the times a histamine intolerance, amines, such as histamine, amine, histamine. There are many more like tyramine, cadaverine, a whole laundry list. Those are created when protein breaks down in the gut. And it's loosely used as this like fear mongering, vegan, anti-meat argument, but they don't get specific enough into the science to actually understand the downfalls of it. So in excess, these amines are toxic to the body. You know, we try to remove them through the kidneys, the filtration systems, the liver, and it can cause heart palpitations. That's one of the more common ones that people notice. And it's not a matter of eating fresher meat. Regardless of how fresh the meat is, if your body can't digest it and break it down, even you know, the most recently slaughtered chicken or beef will replicate your histamine intolerance regardless. You know, the temperature of your digestive system plus the high moisture and bacterial environment, doesn't matter how fresh the meat is. If your body's not digesting it, you're gonna have histamine issues just from protein on its own. You know, whether it's slaughtered today, tomorrow, next week, that is not nearly as significant as your body's ability to break down the protein and digest it and correspondingly deal with the amines produced by the breakdown of the meat. It's not just histamine, there's other amines. Yeah, so a lot of the junk foods and stuff that people are eating, omega-6 content of the meat, causes people to eat so much food that the bacteria overgrows and not only are we having histamine and amine issues from the high protein intake, the candida and bad bacteria itself can also produce large amounts of histamine. When a person has a healthy organ system, liver, pancreas, small intestine, those main digestive organs, all of the enzymes, molecules, materials, whatever you want to call them, required to break down the protein are present. If they aren't present, you have to be pretty strict with your diet and maybe even take digestive supplements to fix the issue. You, you guys know, I had liver damage. It's taken me years and years and years to get to a point where I can eat somewhat normal meals. You know, I don't eat more than eight ounces of meat on average per meal. Maybe I'll splurge once a week and have a nice big steak. 
I have even less than that a lot of the time. A pound to a pound and a half of meat per day. Any more than that is going to go undigested. Of course, if you're a bodybuilder or you're a really big guy like, you know, 6'3", 6'4", and have a large frame, you know, you're well over 200 pounds naturally, then yeah, you're going to eat a lot more protein. But for the average person, a pound of meat a day is usually plenty, especially if it's high quality. You know, average Joe, 150-pound twink on the carnivore diet does not need three pounds of meat. You know, that is not healthy under any circumstance. Whether it takes a year or two or 10 to destroy your liver, it's eventually going to happen eating that much meat. So not only is that amount of meat going to produce those amines that can cause stress on your body and all sorts of health issues, minerals like iron and nutrients, especially vitamin A, are very potent when it comes to fungal and candida overgrowth. The bacteria, the yeast in your gut, love those two nutrients especially. They really fuel the growth of bad microbes. You know, those love to grab onto iron and vitamin A and they grow like crazy. People say candida is from sugar, but if your gut health is bad enough, the candida has different morphologies where it will start eating protein and fat. And then you're really screwed where you, know, you almost can't eat anything until you get the right probiotics and supplements into your routine. Yeah, so freedom units, four to eight ounces of protein per meal for the people that have half of a brain. When we switch to metric, 120 to 240 grams. And again, that is body weight dependent. So you know, if you're spending a lot of time with your girlfriend or boyfriend, then you might need some more protein or if you're like work construction or something reasonable. You want to give your body a perfect amount of protein. You don't want to undereat and you don't want to overeat. Just find the amount that you're comfortable eating. You can go with your natural appetite. You know, don't be at that dinner table and have a few bites of meat left or half of a steak left and force yourself to eat it. Save it for the next meal, you know? May need temporary digestive assistance. So, as long as you ensure you're not eating too much protein, you're chewing it very well, and you have a balanced gut to digest it, you know, whether you need probiotics, masticum, digestive enzymes, you kind of have to experiment. And one thing I'm not gonna go too much into in this video is uh, Wi-Fi shielding, EMF protection, and making sure your digestive system is shielded from radiation. I always wear Wi-Fi shielding clothing. Even if I follow the perfect diet, you know, I remember when I was getting my tattoo in New York and I wasn't wearing my EMF shirt, I had diarrhea like every single day. So the radiation, high stress on the digestive system will mess everything up. Uh, I, again, I didn't want to go too much into this, but if you're in a high radiation environment, your liver, pancreas, and small intestine function is greatly impaired. So it's mostly the bacteria and the yeast breaking down the food. It's not good. Just spend 50, 60 bucks on the shirt and you won't have to worry about it. I also drink water kefir, which helps break down the carbs and the starches in my meal, and it also inhibits the bad bacteria like the candida, so then my body can produce and focus on the enzymes needed to digest and absorb the protein. Mastic gum can also help keep the protein out of the stomach, preventing certain microbes like H. pylori from absorbing and keeping the food stuck there. We do have uh, macronutrient digestive enzymes on organsupplements.com that has everything you need to break down protein as well as other macronutrients. It will literally dissolve the food in your stomach. <laughs> uh, what's interesting is out of the six enzymes in my custom macronutrient blend, four of them are for protein. Protein takes over four enzymes to digest, whereas carbs and fats, it's really minimal. And in many cases, the bacteria in your stomach will just digest the carbohydrates for you and the fats can almost be absorbed directly into the small intestine. So out of all the foods you can overeat, protein is by far the worst because it is just so difficult to digest. Your body needs so much to do it. And when it goes undigested in the, in the stomach, then it kind of rots and produces really inflammatory compounds. If you overeat carbohydrates, maybe you get just some slight candida overgrowth and then that dissipates and goes away. If you overeat fat, maybe your body produces too much bile and you get diarrhea. But protein, 
it stays there, it causes constipation, it can, it's just, it's not good. Uh, so hopefully this gives you guys a perspective of uh, to keep an eye on your protein intake and making sure, you know, you find the ideal amount and don't go crazy with it. Hey, look, you can sit down and have a giant steak for dinner, but, you know, don't, don't go and have, you know, three sausages for breakfast the next day and a giant steak for lunch. You know, you want to keep it relative to, uh, you know, a 12 to 24 hour period. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you go to frank uh you'll see all of my businesses through which you can support me and some things that are relevant to this video specifically, such as the uh, digestive stuff on organ supplements. But outside of that, if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon.